we just made offensive basketball look like nine-year-olds practice more than us. Um, you know, I told the guys after the game, I didn't mean to be the Grinch that stole Christmas here, but you know, at the end of the year, they don't ask how you won games. They ask you how many you won, and they ask who you beat. And uh, anytime you can get out of a early season game against a, a team as good as Monmouth that returns all their players, that, that has the guard play that they have uh, with a win, you take it and you figure out a way to get better. And uh, uh, so hopefully we, we, you know, we can do some things. We, we tried to play hard. We tried to guard. But offensively, we were so selfish and so bad uh, that it just it ruined uh, uh, our defensive approach today. Frank, uh, King was crediting the defense to start. It looked like you guys really threw them out of their rhythm. Mm -hmm. Just what changed, especially in that second half? I think they scored on 12 or 13. Bad, bad offense. I mean, we did it the first half. We did it the second half. We came out, totally controlled the game off defensively. Passed the ball to each other, actually made a layup or two. We built leads, and then we just decided that you know we're gonna act like practice is something that we never do, and and throw the ball to the wrong people, and have guys not know what we're running. We came out of four timeouts today, and we did not even attempt to execute what we talk, spoke about running during timeouts, uh, and that's our our inability. I, this team has one major flaw. And, and I don't mind sharing it because it's nothing personal. They don't listen real well. And, you know, when you're not a good listening team, you're going to end up in bad spots. We got lucky today. From your vantage point, obviously it went your way, but how did that last situation play out and what were you expecting to happen down there? Yeah, once again, we were trying to run um, uh, something there at the end, a uh, little kind of thing that we run and, and – um, where we overload one side, and if you match up with the overload, then we try to play through the opposite corner. Uh, we actually kind of made that read, and it got to Dwayne, and everyone thought Dwayne was going to let it go. Uh, and I think that's why P.J. was kind of – because P.J. was not where he belonged. He was in no man's land. Uh, but I think, I think P.J. thought he was going to shoot it, and he was trying to go to the other side to, to go after an offensive rebound. Uh, and then Dwayne, I, I have no idea how he saw PJ because he he kind of froze on me a little bit, you know. He took a dribble into that seam and he kind of killed his dribble and kind of just jumped up. And at the last second, I have no idea how he found PJ, uh, but he did, and and he made a clean pass. And then, you know, PJ to to figure out a way to to catch it in the air and throw it. That's that was like a Michael Beasley kind of play. I haven't coached too many guys that 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 have that ability to control themselves in the air to be able to make a play like that. What does it say about P.J. that he was able to stay engaged in, in that overtime period after uh, 0 for 8, I think it was, in the first half? Do you think he would have been able to have that kind of mental toughness you know, this time last year or his freshman season? Yeah, well, obviously, um, I, I, I've learned a little bit about him because last year I wouldn't have played him. I, he wouldn't have finished the game. He would have been on the bench and I played somebody else. And uh, that's where, where I've learned a lot about him. Uh, uh, I, you know, PJ's worked his tail off. He deserves the opportunity to, to play through some mistakes. He's, he's grown up. He's embraced uh, who he is. He's got to be a lot better than he was today. By no way, shape, or form am I, am I trying to uh, uh, forgive uh, his inability to play basketball the right way today. But so all our guys are the same way. Ain't, there's not a single guy on our team that played offensive basketball the way we practice. So, you know, it's not trying to, you know, put it on him. I obviously didn't do a very good job in practice yesterday getting us ready offensively for this one. Uh, but that's where I've grown with him is that he's earned my trust. And, you know, there was a segment in the game there where I kind of looked down the bench and I saw him there and the game wasn't going the right way. And I said, I need to put him back out there. And I knew he hadn't been playing well, but uh, I, I, he's earned my trust. And, you know, I, he's, he's a great kid. I'm not surprised that, that uh, he figured out a way to make not just that play, but to, to lay up the play before and, and just some plays in overtime to help us win. 
defensively in, in the first half and early in the second half especially. What kind of stood out to you is impressive. What It seemed like all the shots were, were contested. It, it wasn't that Monmouth was just missing. What, what kind of stood out to you is why things were going your way defensively so much? We play good offense. And, it, you know, and I don't mean to make it sound boring, but we play good offense. So that means Monmouth has to guard. They can't just kind of get out and run on you. When you play offensive basketball the right way, gives yourself a chance to take good shots. You got good shots, you got bad shots. Bad shots are called bad shots, not because a guy that shoots it can't make shots. Bad shots are shots where your floor balance is not good, that you can't offense a rebound. So then when you miss those bad shots, and there's a reason they're called bad, then teams like Monmouth that has four big time guards that play with unbelievable confidence, they're coming downhill at you. And then those guys are hard to defend. Early in the game, we played halfway decent offense. We actually passed it to each other. We actually screened. We actually made a layup and a jump shot here and there. So it allowed our defense to set and didn't allow them to get turned loose. Then we started with the turnovers and the bad shots and the selfish basketball and offense. I told the guys at halftime, I said, you guys had a chance to, to kind of get away from a very good basketball team. And your selfishness and your ineptitude offensively gave them life. You're in a fight now. So we came out the second half. We did things the right way. We built the lead. And we immediately went back to the same habits that got us in trouble in the first half. So it's all, offense was our biggest problem today. And make, missing free throws. That's the other part. Frank, just given um, the number of high major teams that Monmouth beat last season, you know, pre-game prepping for this game, was it important that your kids understood that Monmouth wasn't going to come here and roll over and, and that they were looking for a fight? I think our guys, are, you know, we, we got the first year guys don't get it. They, they don't understand. But all the other guys that were in the locker room last year, they understand. They, they don't take teams for granted. We played the team a couple years ago, Manhattan College here, and all my guys were real young. Manhattan had nothing but seniors. Everyone knew they were good, but my guys were like, ah, it's Manhattan College. Well, they came in here and they throttled us. And, you know, we obviously got guys that understand that now, and the, the preparation was better. Um, if you ask me if I can change the order of who we play and when you play three games in five days, I wouldn't play Monmouth the last game. Uh, but, uh, but that's the way the, the things landed, and I think our guys were prepared. I just think we didn't play very on offense. Frank, three, you mentioned the three and five. You got three wins, which was the goal. Just where do you go uh, moving here in terms of giving them uh, a break or a rest before SC State on Friday? Yeah, we're, we're off tomorrow. Tomorrow's our off day. And, uh, you know, obviously coaches will get together and, and be the miserable human beings that we are for six months a year uh, and and, you know, figure out a way to – uh, to be positive uh, when we watch the film and, uh, and and then come in Thursday excited about who we are. I know our guys will be excited. You know, we just we got we got to get better uh, with our ears. We, we don't get very, we're not very good with our ears. Um, and uh, and then come in Thursday, and we got to prepare for, with one thing in mind: play better than we played today. Plain and simple. Coach, this is the third game that Silva and Kotsar had early foul trouble. Uh, what are you telling these guys to try to fix this, and what effect did it have on your team? I'm going to give you an answer, and you're probably going to get mad at me. Don't foul. Fair enough. Don't foul. You know, Kotsar, uh, you know, he, 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 he's got more fouls than rebounds on the year. I'm not being a smart aleck. I'm telling you the truth. That's a problem. You know, uh, you know, Chris. Chris is too valuable a player for us uh, to to be in foul trouble. I thought Chris didn't play a bad game today. I think he took tried to take a charge, which I probably need to keep my mouth shut about. And you know, but he Chris's fouls today were not bad fouls. These guys are just good. They come at you, and they with their ball screens, they put your bigs in in, in some tough, difficult situations and. Uh, you know, Chris's fouls were not bad today. Neither were Mike's. We can live with the fouls they committed today. Uh, uh, we we just we we need we need more production on offense from from Kotsar. You know, we we got to get more on offense from him. Hey, 
Thank you, guys.